What's up all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and today is the day. Today is the day that I get to do my collected editions walkthrough for 2021. So join me. And here we go. Follow me. So this time around we're going to kick it off with the DC Absolutes. We're going to be looking at Omnis here in a second. But this is my Absolute collection. I try to keep them in alphabetical order. Yeah right, I'm sure some of you are judging me already but uh <laughs> okay yeah why is ronin here like that doesn't make any sense because there's something anyway so my question is though how do you all keep these do you keep the backs like because each one of these comes you know with a back like that like do you keep the backs facing you or do you keep the s books in the slip case facing i like the way these look like i like the books facing oh yes and a big shout out to my camera person camera woman camera lady my wonderful amazing wife Melanie. camera wife camera wife yes uh, I got some absolutes on the other side which we'll look at here in a little bit but there are ones here like to me when people ask me why do I, I get absolute editions because to me this is the best possible format to own these books there it's oversized and I'm allowed to touch them now you are we're married <laughs> we're married now uh, they're oversized they're wonderful representations of these stories and it's the best format. It's the nicest format to own them in. Now, in order to make it on the absolute list, like the story has to mean something to me, like Sandman. It doesn't necessarily mean that the artwork is phenomenal. And then we have something like this, on the other hand, with Absolute Wildcats. This story is, uh, oh my gosh, it's not that good. No offense to anybody that likes it, but to me, it wasn't good at all. However, the heart is Jim Lee, and to have it in that format, it's the only way to own it. Then, uh, Oh man, my buddy Philip sent me those. Absolute Wonder Woman, what a guy. Seriously, like this library is built not just three decades of me building it, but also so many of my viewers sending me some stuff. So I'll be giving some shout outs if I remember names and stuff. So here we have the Omnis. Now, Animal Man, you can tell is DC, but you're probably wondering why isn't Animal Man by Grant Morrison here? Well, that's because their Animal Man is a little bit different. Theirs is like, I would say a vertigo title. I like the spines on Batman Nightfall, but I wish they connected. Nobody likes those spines. Oh, I, can't I like the you spines like, them. like I, individually, sure, but I wish they connected because they seem like they should. I love Kelly Jones. Don't get me wrong, like that the iconic image of Bane breaking Batman's back it doesn't get any better than that. But I wish they had gotten like Graham Nolan or somebody else to do the covers because I always think of well, Graham Nolan and Jim Apero who passed away as the two artists that did that. Uh, so here we have Road to No Man's Land. Of course, I gotta make some room for No Man's Land when it comes out. That's one thing about books like this. You always have to shift them over. I love the way these look here, with the exception of this almost flesh tone for Batman Omnibus Volume 2. Here we have Batman Eternal. And then I try to keep the Bat family together. Then I'm like, okay, I used to have Nightwing up here. Then I thought, well, you know, he kind of became his own man. Uh, and then what about uh, Red Hood? And I'm like, you know, alphabetical order, whatever. Batwoman, love this. Although a missed opportunity for that cover because there's so much better artwork that... Kick you yourself in the face <laughs> with that Williams book. Williams III did. Um, some more stuff. I don't have Brave and the Bold Volumes 1 and 2. And why, you ask? Because the Bronze Age wasn't really for me. And it, it was just one of those things that... The reason I got that one was because of Jim Apparel's artwork. Here we have Deathstroke and the Flash. It's always funny to me that the spine of the Flash is the Flash just standing there instead of, you know, <laughs> running. We still need a volume three. Wait, even this one, he's, you know, at least struck in a pose a bit. He's just kind of <laughs> like looking up. And I love, uh, I think this is Scott Collins, if I'm not mistaken. Um, different spines for different eras, which I dig. Here's the um, new 52 era. For the era. viewers, I apologize. I can't. Like, there's a bookcase right next to me. I can't get right straight on this. <laughs> you can always get, give me the camera, baby. Uh, the Jack Kirby Fourth World. Still missing OMAC, which I need to uh, remedy that. Uh, Green Lantern, Jeff Johns. And again, alphabetical order. I'm going to talk about each single book. Uh, so, although people have asked me to pull some books out and showcase the artwork. So here you go. Look at this big, massive, motley He-Man. <laughs> <laughs> that does if the girth of that doesn't say, say he man to you i don't know what will that's a poetic way to put it that's a i was thinking that but i didn't know how to word it look at oh uh, i love this story i've done an overview of this one um talking about how they kind of mature the themes of he-man like the cartoon you remember 
and add it to it. Look. Oh, we'll cut that. We'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. Okay. Now we have uh, House of Secrets and House of Mystery. And the one thing that I hated that they did through here, I know we talked about Marvel Spines, uh, but nobody complains enough about this. They changed the look of the book in Volume 2 with House of Mystery. This is the kind of Bronze Age stuff that I dig, though. I love the horror stuff. So you have Cain and Abel, House of Secrets, House of Mystery, two characters that later on appeared in Sandman, Injustice. Love that stuff. The best Jeff Johns comics ever to me. Uh, Jonah Hex, Justice League of America, Bronze Age Volume 3. I'll probably end up giving that away for some giveaway because I gave up uh, giveaway Volumes 1 and 2. Some more Justice League, one of the greatest, also one of the best. Wish we had a Mark Wade one. Is that the heaviest, biggest? No, I think the biggest one is still the uh, final crisis or blackest night. They, they take the, the, the win. Although, you know, they're getting bigger and bigger. Like this one here, the Justice League Dark, that one's huge. So here we have some more Nightwing, Red Hood. And we have Seven Soldiers of Victory here, some Spectre, Superman. Like, I can't believe we don't have that much Superman of modern age. It's crazy. It goes from Exile, we still need a bunch. And over here to your, right down there, that's where you'll see my custom-bound uh, Superman. And the ones my buddy Kyle sent me right there. So, and my wife's comics. So we'll look at that shelf here in a little bit. But I did want to showcase that. It, those are what I call the Man of Steel, the Triangle Year Superman. And then we... Have some more Superman by Peter Tomasi. I love that book. Super, Super Sons. Sons. I still need to read. Phenomenal. Along with Howard the Duck. New Teen Titans, which led to Teen Titans, and those are my custom bound Teen Titan books that I didn't think DC was ever gonna do. Wonder Woman by the phenomenal George Perez. Am I gonna get the absolute to have George Perez's artwork in absolute format? Hell yes, I am. He's the man. Then the Who's Who. There's another volume coming out later in 2022 and Zero Hour. Let's go look at the other side. All right, so let's look at the other side where I have some other absolutes. This absolute is a different dimension than all the other ones. And this is the world's greatest, the Paul Dini and Alex Ross stories. And then we have Arkham Asylum, which doesn't really have a spine on the book here. Um, That's weird. Flashpoint and big shout out to Trumbo right here. What a guy, Trumbo Gun Man. We, he He's knew these, these were my wells for years, and he sent them my way. What a, I, seriously, you guys are the best. Uh, Identity Crisis from Kyle. He knows how I feel about the story, but he also knows how I feel about absolutes. Uh, Why the Last Man, of course, and The Killing Joke. I think I gave away I gave away the omnibus. I gave away the trades of that. I gave away the, uh, the hardcovers of that. And here we have Vertigo. So I kept my Vertigo separate. Um, and here we have Lucifer. We are supposed to have another one of the Books of Magic, which is right here. And that should be coming out sometime in 2022. 100 Bullets as well. It needs another one. We don't have enough of this, though. Swamp Thing. Oh, we have a new 52. Nancy Collins. I wish they'd go back. But what we really need is all of this collected in omnibus format. Oh, the Delano run. And we've had some amazing runs of Hellblazer or, like, uh, Mike Carey's run. So... There's some other just obscure sized books from the DC Black Label line. Harleen. I yeah, love Harleen that book. is in here. We reviewed and, that. Yeah, I know. Here. Pull uh You like the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull that out. I don't I we each have one hand available. It might be hard. <laughs> there we Can go. Can you get it? Yeah, so the cover, like on the first printing, is like that. Yeah. It's like a dust it's a cool dust jacket. Superman. Oh man, is this the oh this is the the print that came with the Barnes & Noble exclusive uh, Last Earth, or Last Night on Earth. Forgot I had that here. And then Superman Year One, which is so weird because it's not canon, even though it's Superman Year One. Uh, I, I, like, it seems like DC just makes up the rules as they go along with what's canon and what isn't from the Black Label line. And, of course, some hardcovers, the greatest yeah, I've never hardcovers. Read Ex Machina. It's not my favorite, but it's still pretty good. And Swamp Thing, of course. Keeping oh, those. Mr. Miracle. So good. Yeah. It's keeping those because I like the original colors of these, which can also be found on the box set. And then Scott Alp. 
Fables, which they canceled the Absolute Fables, so I decided to keep my deluxe editions and which then Jack of Fables. A horrible shame. It is. I mean, I'm, it's been a long time. And it's coming back. It would be great. It's coming back. I wish they would do an omnibus because honestly, an absolute would take so many, like well, at yeah, least that's eight. True. At least, at least some kind of new format. And here's the deluxe editions of uh, the Rebirth era. Sadly, line has been discontinued. What the heck is the Omega Man doing there? I shouldn't be there. And, uh, it wasn't me. And then some other uh, wonderful books sent my way. Uh, this one here. Oh my gosh, this was one of my. F I didn't finish reading it, or it probably would have made it in my top twenty re or top ten reads that I'll be doing later this week on the channel of twenty twenty one, the strange death of Alex Raymond. Uh, Carson Grubal, gentleman uh, that sent me this book, is the one that drew it. Like I know it's got Dave Sims' name on it, but Carson is really the guy that put it all together. And then some magnetic press books, some that I need to read. Um, as well as down here is other stacks that I need to read. And this awesome, yes. we'll be looking at this, uh, my Marvel Omnis later, but this is the one from, uh, one of my viewers overseas sent me this. This is the Spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus by J.M. DeMatteis and Sal Buscema. Of course, it's not... In English. In English. So there's that. And before we go to the next bookcase, big shout out to Super Smile hard he custom bound these judge dread books and even made these custom dust jacket covers like to put on the spines uh what a guy man because he was like this is the better way to read judge dread now before we look at the trade paperbacks on the other side or trade paperbacks for dc which will be coming up here shortly we're going to look at these hard covers from dc these are custom bound hard covers that i've acquired over the years with the exception of this up here, because this was uh, supposed to be included in the now canceled New Teen Titans Omnibus Volume 6. But these are some that I got from Kirk when he was still living in Kentucky and still dealing with custom bound books. Uh, or some that fans have sent me. Or some that I just uh, I bought over the years. Like some of these, oh my goodness, I've had for, geez, almost a decade. Uh, but just a acquiring throughout the years. in the When you collect Omnibus editions and things like that you you know you, you end up finding so many of these things on ebay uh through reddit but custom bound books i was that was a big thing of mine back in the day not so much anymore i just don't have the time to put them together because some of them i did myself i just yeah i don't have the time to put these together and you know still read them all right let's get to some independent stuff of course one of the greatest books to have been released in 2021 Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. And it's signed by Don Rosa. I mean, well, th his signature is printed on there. Correct, correct. And uh, this is the wait, dime. Wait, wait, it showed the dime. Yeah, and the dime, which I've done an overview of this before. And this dime Just comes out. Just show it again. Dime comes out, and we have a Calvin and Cobbs collection. Love that stuff. The Fanic Graphics. Uh, I do have a new one. Huh, I wonder where it is. Did we not put it up yet? Not Usagi my fault. Ojimbo. Yeah, it is your fault. Uh, as well as the legends of Usagi Yojimbo here, the Stan Sakai stuff. Um, and the picture. I mean, the legends, Sati. the hardcover. Yes, and then to Omar, Stan Sakai and his wife drew that. And the covers, 35 years of covers. Oh, these two wonderful collections here. Um, the Inkal and Meta Barons. And then, of course, Tintin, which I did read a lot of these, and for some reason I just haven't gotten back to. Uh, we have Rusty Brown, PTSD, and Seconds right there. And Seconds almost made it to one of my favorite reads last year. Almost. We both really liked it. And then, of course, the Carl Barks era of Ducks. Not finished yet. I love Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck so much. I own it in many different formats. There's the other box set. Dude, why is that here? That should be up there. Mental note. And more Duck comics that have been translated from overseas. The Darkwing Duck uh, this is actually the Disney Afternoon Fanographic set. Which this, is good. This is the Darkwing Duck Definitive Dangerous Edition. No, wait. That one was a good one. This is good, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this was originally published by Boom Comics. However, um, for some reason, they lost the rights to the dialogue. So yeah. Joe Comics had to <laughs> rewrite it. It's so weird. This will always remind me of my pup that passed away, Nikita. 
because when she died, my buddy Brooks, loves books, sent that my way. That was, um, that was really nice. Uh, some other independent stuff here from Image on Oni Press. And you may have heard of this little indie title called Big Dams in City. Colossal Conan there. I love these. Uh, this is what got me to love Conan. So I think I will always keep that stuff. The slipcase editions of Umbrella Academy, True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys from Kyle and Fear Reader of X. You guys are so awesome. Black Hammer, Library Editions, Rat Queens. We have a new volume that just came in, mm -hmm. Volume 3. These are awesome. This is Mage, uh, the original Mage right here, the hero discovered, the hero denied, and we still need no, a hardcover. Defined. defined. Uh, we still need a the last story arc collected in hardcover format. Uh, here we have some Kieran Gillen, and this is the Wicked and the Divine. This is the entire series. Black Magic, which is on hiatus right now. Oh, I love this book right here. Above the Clouds. This is such a it's cute pretty. book. This was a Kickstarter book um, sent to me. And speaking of Kickstarter, some of you all send me your Kickstarters like this right here. You guys are great. I've had, actually, I had him on the show. Um, Snapdragon. I remember reading that for Old Reader and New Reader. That was a cute book. I really like that. Sin City, the Deluxe Library Edition. Some other stuff down here like Gypsy Omnibus and... Yeah, Battle Chasers. I was hoping that they would reprint this. This is a beautiful slipcase edition of Battle Chasers. But for some reason, they didn't. Lucky Luke and the Neil Gaben Library Editions, Valerian. Those are all printed by Cinebooks. Why does it go up the other way? I don't know. That's just the way they print them. So... Here we have some Predator books, Aliens Dead Orbit, which is going to be included in the Aliens Omnibus Volume 4, but still has wonderful, beautiful artwork. So until that book comes out, I'm keeping it. And some slipcase editions there from Boom Studios. The Dennis the Menace, now discontinued line. Down here we have a library edition of Mike Alred's Mad Men. And Battle Pugs, it's too big to fit on the shelf. Battle Pugs is awesome. This is uh, Mike Norton's Battle Pug. Look how cute that is. It's huge. Oh, and Elsa Chartier, let me plug her channel. Dude, she was in Time Magazine, like in a top 10 list. Yeah, she's so a great So you guys great check out her channel. She creator. does case studies. It's so cool. You'll learn a thing or two. Nocturnals, which I ended up, Kyle sent me an extra copy. We did a giveaway for Christmas. And some other collections there like the flight collection i love that stuff all the way on the end uh after melanie's arm yeah, there we go <laughs> thanks uh right there the flight collection which yeah, i've you've done had these for a long time i love that stuff i wish they had released them in ah! hardcover form. look what you did uh-huh lumberjanes lydia was more of a fan of lumberjanes than i was but uh we got manga but i'll be doing a separate manga tour once i figure out that mess right now um i love manga it's not that it's a good mess it's a good mess to be in but it's just uh um, a bunch of independent stuff. This is um, some stuff from Dynamite here. Dynamite! The, if you've not read the James Bond stuff, it's phenomenal. Uh, the Asterix, I need volume four. Stuff that I've never read, that I know is popular overseas. What I was going to say is that this is usually where I come and say, okay, let's, let's talk about some of these books for hidden gems. Because a lot of them... Dark Star 916 sent my way, or I bought throughout the years. Judge Dredd, which I'm still reading. I have some more volumes, and that video will come out in January now because I'm a realist. They also sent me these Slain books here. They were really nice. The folks at 2000 AD, just phenomenal. Uh, this was a Kickstarter right here, The Star Child by James uh, Owen. Uh, Michael Moorcock. I never it's did a beautiful get case. any more of this. Never did end up getting any more of those. Should order the Sumerian. That was fun. TKL sent me this. I remember. I, but I did plug their uh, Sarah book, though. It's phenomenal. Space Bastards. This was a Kickstarter. Godzilla Half Century War. Just because James Stokoe, if you're not familiar with his work, get familiar with his work. He's an amazing creator. And then some other indie stuff there. This section is all good. All good. Yeah, it's stuff we've read recently. I just, for some reason, I never did go back and put in alphabetical order. 
Same thing down here. I've done overviews of a lot of these. Some of them have been in my hidden gem. Some of them have been in my top 13 favorite horror mov or movies, uh, comics of all time. And some of them I need to finish. Like Kabuki, I think that line was discontinued. I don't know what's going on with there. And then Critical Role, that was, I think that was Kyle that sent me that one. He swears by it even though I don't watch that stuff. Joyride was a lot of fun. That will make it in the hidden gems. As well as Orphans. That stuff is solid. And I started picking up Vampirella again because they started reprinting uh, them in the nice hardcover format like Creepy and Eerie magazine. And then there we go. There we have some more books that I've read recently. All right. So here we have some European titles. Manara, the library I can't show <laughs> because it's, well. Well, it has erotica. One of the <laughs> one of them does. Yeah, the other one doesn't. This one but... I can show. I mean, he is one of my favorite creators. Like, let's even this stuff though can be a little risque. Ah, it's fine. But I think he just draws just absolutely stunning, stunning women. He did a book with uh, Chris Claremont. The I don't know what this is here. This isn't European. Um, X women. Castle in the Stars, which I wish they would continue. And we need to dust. This is the area that we didn't dust. Peter Pan, I love this book. So I'll be doing my top 10 of like favorite European comics um, or non American comics. Eternaut, I can't push that book enough. Love that book. There was a sequel done, um, I think, it came out a couple of years ago and translated into English last year. For some reason, I, I don't know. I think it's because I probably hold Eternaut. Like, it's such here, a pedestal. Can, can you go back to it? That's yeah. such a striking image. Like, it's just very powerful. Oh, it's a top ten favorite. Like, it's it's amazing. You should read it. I think you were like, I don't know why this is here. Oh, I was in the middle of reading it. That's why. It's, uh, I skimmed through that one. I like skimming. <laughs> that's like reading. <laughs> well, that's it's like, like I was standing at the dining room table and I just kept looking at it. So I guess that's a, it's a compliment that I just kept standing there flipping through it. You all know how much I love the Humanoids books. So this is where my Humanoids, uh, most of my Humanoid books are. Some of them, like you saw over there, like the Slipcase Editions, um, they're over on that side. But this is where I keep most of them. And of course, two of the most important comics, Understanding Comics and Making that Comics, Scott McCloud. Ago. Yeah, those, seriously, if you've not read them, do yourself a favor. And some more European books down here, or Big books like Liberty Meadows right there. It's a big book. And, oh, this is where it went. The Brigada. I love this stuff. This is a... So this is translated from the Spanish. It's about a bunch of little warrior dwarfs. Oh, cute. Like the heart face. Big uh, eyes. This is awesome. I think oh, I need yeah, to do it. I really like the art style. Art is awesome. And I kick-started the third volume... Was it the fifth volume? But anyway, I may do an overview of this one, like a further, more in-depth overview of this one. Oh, a series I wish that they would come back and do is the Smurfs Anthology. Volume 6 was solicited, but sadly, never came out. Uh, and then Station 16, Snowpiercer, Beautiful Darkness. I love these books right here. They made it into my top 13 favorite horror comics. And I forgot to point, this is uh, Mort Cinder, same guy that did The Eternaut, did that one. Not as good or memorable, but still pretty good. And then, of course, the Mobius stuff, including this hidden gem right there, Isabella. Really enjoyed this. This is uh, printed by Dark Horse. All right, the Marvel stuff. Let's do some of the oversized hardcovers first, and then we'll look at the Omnibus editions. And kicking it off over here with Marvel 1602, and everything is in alphabetical order, or... Maybe. Because why is Avengers here? Because it's still Avengers besides the fact that it's got new on there. Mighty and dark. Avengers, regardless. Sadly, they never finished these um, oversized hardcovers. But perhaps, you know, we, we are living in different ages. We could get a omnibus one day. Just like we're getting an omnibus of this right here. Avengers versus X-Men. However, they're not collecting X-Sanction in it. Which I know uh, some people want it. But man, that book is already big, so... Uh, more Avengers. This is the Jason Aaron Avengers run. All new, all different Avengers. So good. Nobody talks about that one. Hardly. Children's Crusade. I can't wait to see that in the omnibus format. Black Bolt. Love that book. 
Avengers No Surrender. That's the book I meant. I'm sorry. The, the way it run was still pretty good, but the Avengers No Surrender, when it was a brain trust of like uh, Zub, Ewing, and Wade, was awesome. Some Black Panther by Tanahasi Coates, as well as Cap there. Civil War. Um, Deadpool. We were getting a lot of Deadpool at one time in oversized format. Doctor Strange, which, again, this one here. We never got a volume one, but we are getting an omnibus of it. Um, sadly, we never got any more of these oversized hardcovers for Hulk. would be really awesome to get like a Bruce Jones oversized hardcover or this stuff. This is the post-World uh, War Hulk. Uh, Omnibus, Immortal Hulk, Volume 5 has been solicited for next May, I believe. Some Inhumans. They were getting some love for a while. Marvel Snapshots, so good. And then Marvels. They do like a... Like, it seems like they do an anniversary release all the time, so I'm sure there'll be like a 50th anniversary, 55th anniversary. Moon Knight by Lemire. Awesome. Still need that Moon Knight by Bendis. Um... And, yeah, the this is Secret War. I really, you know, I talk about Brian Michael Bendis and not really digging his stuff. But I really dug this. This was a lot of fun. This gave me hope for his new Avengers. Um, wait, I'm not going to take it. Let's check it off. I, of course, I'm showing off artwork. Uh, but it's got beautiful artwork in here. It took forever to come out. I think it was delayed so much that the final issue came out after his new Avengers had already kick-started. And this was supposed to be what kickstarted his new Avengers and why a lot of people thought Ronan was Matt Murdock. Stephen King, The Dark Tower. All right, let's get to some Omnis. So, of course, top shelf is always the X-Men. I mean, yes, that's top shelf because they're oversized hardcovers. But the X-Men is the only place I break my rule with mixing in oversized hardcovers and Omni Omnis. Uh, because... It's X-Men, that's why. So I got them all in chronological order. So if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I do reading orders. And reading orders to X-Men for me, outside of writing it down, just comes natural, like breathing. I love this stuff. I love mapping this stuff out, seeing where I would fit. And of course, you know, what's left to do. Because I know we still need like a Road to Onslaught Omnibus. We need a Magneto War Trial of Gambit Omnibus that would fit nicely. You know, we still have holes to plug. Uh, but like I said, all in chronological order, including House of M. Be cool to get an omnibus of that one day. I know a lot of people really want it. Um, some Necrotia. I love that this era right here was so good. The Messiah Complex era, Second uh, Coming, the Messiah War, Necrotia. All that stuff was so good. Uh, the Bendis era. Okay, and then of course what this this forgotten era right here, right before House and Powers of X. How is this? Here? Oh, okay. I'm keeping the events in order. These should be here. But anyway, I'll figure that out later. Hellfire Gala, the new one. These two right here, printed in the city we live in. Uh, Grand Design, which kind of is like my bookend to all X Men stuff. And then we have. Other X-Men related titles, like New Mutants, saving us a lot for Volume 2. Excalibur, Excalibur Volume 2, oh my gosh, love that spine right there. X-Factor, getting a Volume 2 later on in 2022. Wolverine, Volume 3 coming out, so I gotta make some room. All this stuff is Wolvie, including the Weapon X, the return there, and then... What's this little thing? Oh, that's one of the Heroes? little Marvel uh, things that they did for, uh, what was it? It was the Stay at Home. <laughs> initiative the you know because of covid and everything that happened in 2020 a lot of the artists stayed at home and made those little things for fun uh more x-men stuff of course x-force but see x-force does lead into ecstatic so i had to put ecstatics here again in chronological order cable this is the only cable book outside of this but this is let's face it this is really x-force with just some cable issues in there it's the only uh cable book that we ever got in oversized format Uncanny X-Force, Uncanny Avengers. I really wish they had done a follow-up to that. All right. And then... So you have 2.5 shelves worth of X-Men stuff. What kind of Ikea bookshelf is this? This is a Kalex for people asking me. This episode's not brought to you by so Ikea. So you have 2.5. Yeah. Or not 2.5. Yeah. <laughs> I will say... Two and a... One fifth. All right. Before we get started with the rest of the Marvel Omnis, now is a good time to pause here and... Remind people to check out our sponsor.
If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word, at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Kicking it off with August 1961, then of course the modern cosmic saga. Why is this all in non-alphabetical order, you ask? I don't know, because I like it this way. I like all five of the books to be there. They mean a lot to me. Acts of Vengeance. I think I've shown this before, but I love showing this. This is the one time I think that they did this where the covers uh, connect. Neat. Yeah, neat. That's exactly the way I would have said it. <laughs> um, no sign of reprints of these, but you know, maybe one day. We're living in different times. I would love. Look, I'm still holding hope here for an Alpha Flight by Bill Mantlo, or Alpha Flight Volume 2 if they ever decide to reprint that. Then Amazing Spider-Man. Look how big my first printing is. Maybe I'll pick up the second print, or the latest printing. So this is what the spines look like. The new spines. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, why is this here? Oh my gosh. Who read this and put it in the... Mm. Nope, not me. This does not belong there. I didn't read that. I know it was you. We'll have this talk uh -huh. later. Spider-Man by Roger Stern. I don't even know what my point was. I lost my focus. Oh yeah, the spines. I think once you have the, all the spines together, they do look better. You know, I can see people like, wait a minute, that doesn't look as good, but... I think when the new spines are together, I, I like the little image. I just wish the font was a little bit bigger. Uh, more Spidey stuff in chronological order, which if you're part of our Patreon, every month or so, depending on how big the reading orders get, I put up a poll for people to vote on the next reading orders. And next time around, it's going to be Spider-Man versus Superman. So I'll kick off the year with that reading order. So Spider-Man Clone Saga and Ben Riley have been asked how when, when are those going to get reprinted. I think it's interesting to live that we now live in a time when people are demanding for a reprint of the Clone Saga and Ben Riley Omnibus. That's cool. It's cool. It's different. That's for sure. Uh, this is coming back out in a print next year. JMS Spidey Volume One. If you, in case you missed it, the Avengers. I want to see some some more Avengers Omnibus. Like I would love to see an Operation Galactic Storm oversized hardcover, and that will fit right nicely there. Uh, these are coming back into print in 2022. However, it's been, I think Avengers by Hickman has been delayed until December of 2022. And then some Black Widow, Captain America with the new spine design. Now, I this... think I like the image at the bottom too. However, I think larger font works because they're superhero comics. They're loud and dramatic and you need that um, type of title on the side too, where this would be more, it's more subtle or, or classy. Um, yeah. I think that's why I like the bigger better. It reminds me of like a, what are they called? Like a, almost like tech, maybe you said it. Maybe it's because they went for a classy style, like a like a text textbook type of style. Um, some more cap, more modern age cap. Again, all in alphabetical order. Unicron. We've got Unicron. Oh, Unicron. Gosh dang it, Melody. <laughs> We've got Captain Britain down there getting a expanded uh, reprint. That's when they make the books bigger with more content and reprinting them. I love when they do that. They're also doing that with Iron Fist. Look at how many Conans. Not enough. So Conan, you got Conan the Marvel Years, you got Conan Savage, sort of Conan the Marvel Years, and then you've got the Kurt Busiek Conan right there, and then the Jason Aaron. Uh, another rule I broke was with Conan. I'm like, I'm going to keep all the Conan together. Cosmic Ghost Rider, because this is just an oversized hardcover. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, Daredevil by Frank Miller. And I know it's not an alphabetical order, but that technically is Daredevil Marvel Knights. I need to do, I need to get, um, there, somebody made, years ago made me a custom spine for my, or a custom dust jacket for my runaways. And then, of course, Brian Michael Bendis' Daredevil run. All right, some more Omnis on the other side, but let's look at the oversized hardcover. Spider-Man, I never did get rid of my Spidey best of. Uh, Civil War, Spider-Man. Some Spidey from Dan Slott's era, Thor, which will be getting a omnibus of Jason Aaron's Thor. 
A piece of petrified wood? piece of petrified wood. Where'd that wood. come from? I can't remember who sent that to me. Uh, or I, I've had that for ages. Young Avengers, which is getting an omnibus, as well as Venom by Donny Cates. That's getting an omnibus. Uh, down here, we have more of the continuing Daredevil stuff from the other side. So we have Brubaker's run, we have Shadowland, Mark Wade's run, and the Ron Garney run. And this is what I was talking about. Deadpool was getting a lot of love in oversized hardcover format and omnibus format. Like, that's a mini bus, but still counts. You know, the, there's my Devil Dinosaur. Eight issues collected in one omnibus. When people are like, how can they make 14 issues and call it an omnibus? Dude, come and knock on my door. Devil Dinosaur, baby. Eight issues. Omnibus. Look, look how they even wrote it. I don't care. It was Jack Kirby coming back, doing Moon Boy and Devil Dinosaur. Doctor Strange, I just got a volume one. And I'll show where we keep all that stuff, where my reading pile is and stuff. I got them several places. So this is the Fantastic Four. This is my second printing of the Fantastic Four. I sold my original first printing, which had a different spine. Uh, Marvel Omnibus was red on white. Uh, but look, this is how the images look together on the spines. A new printing is coming out in early January of this, but this is how it all looks together. So, and they're a little bit skinnier, or thinner, rather. Not fat shaming on these. Y'all know I like them thick. Fantastic Four by John Byrne. Volume 1 is being reprinted. Everybody's hoping for a Volume 2 because I got voted on our top 20 most wanted Omnis, and I'm pretty sure we'll get that. Adventure into Fear. Oh, because I kept it here because it was Fear. And then Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, not enough of this is an omnibus format. I really want a follow-up like Guardians of the Galaxy 3000, a Jim Valentino's run. And honestly, as much as I hate to say it, I like to have uh, Guardians of the Galaxy by Brian Michael Bendis Volume 2. Um, and I hate to say it because I did not like that run. There we have Jerry Duggan's Guardians that led into Infinity Wars, which is why it's here. Hawkeye, a book that I think um, people thought it was going to be reprinted because of the TV show. But no, Howard the Duck. That's David Gabriel's favorite book. Uh, Incredible Hulk. Can you imagine this is going to have a volume four? And I wish, like, if we knew we were going to get four volumes for sure, I wish that, like, they had that image of the Hulk with his face in each letter for H-U-L-K. Oh, that would have been awesome. Unless we get, like, a complete like a companion omnibus, and I'm good with that too. Infinity Gauntlet, War and Crusade, the new, or the trilogy, the cosmic trilogy, the original cosmic trilogy. We have some Iron Man. Iron Man doesn't get a lot of love. I sold all my um, Silver Age Iron Man omnis. It's because I like the epics, and we'll be looking at the epics here in a little bit. But that's a question I always get is, do you get everything? Do you collect everything? No. I've given away a lot of stuff. Giving away a lot of my Golden Age stuff, uh, Silver Age stuff, um, or books that I just didn't really dig. So I don't get everything. I, I did rebuy those like an idiot when I sold my original. I'm like, no, wait, I really like those. I want to own them. And I want to own them complete. Because the even the Epic Collections, even though they're right now they're on, on hiatus, I don't know when they'll come back. I don't know if they'll include a couple of issues, like the What If issue. Uh, here's Moon Knight which we're going to get more volumes of that later this year. Morbius, Miss Marvel, we really need another volume of that because of the TV show. New Warriors, and a volume two is coming, baby. Power Pack. We live in an age where we have Power Pack volumes one and two. That's crazy. Some Punisher. This is what I wish for more. I want some classic Punisher stuff, man. Like the, the classic uh, Wills Portacio, Jim Lee, Carl Potts, Chuck Dixon, uh, Mike Barron era. That, that stuff I loved. And we have run. This is the custom dust jacket somebody made me. Because I didn't like the flesh look to the spine. Silver Surfer. Solomon Kane, another Robert E. Howard property. I did keep these. I thought they were just like a historical lesson in comics. It's, it's interesting to go back and look at Golden Age Marvel compared to like golden age dc or silver age marvel for that matter and silver age dc there's some thor right there thunderbolts getting a volume two ultimates which is being reprinted uh ultimate oh those are ultimate uh spider-man i don't have volume one down there because i'm doing an overview of it coming this week but ultimate miles morales is being reprinted as volumes one and two 
Ben Omnibus, Volume 1 and 2 and 3. No sign of Volume 4 yet, but we are getting a Ben Omnibus by Donny Cates. War of the Realms, What If, Volume 2 is coming. Star Wars, Old Republic. Gosh, I love that book. And there's the Star Wars Omnis right there. I, did, I, I got, see, I don't have, like, the original Marvel years because I, I had Volumes 1 and 2 and I just got rid of them. They weren't that great, uh, at least to me. And then Aliens. And the reason I'm keeping that down there is because that's, like, starting the Aliens line. And I'm going to run out of Kalax room. Now, let's go look at some other stuff. Before we look at the next shelves, um, people always ask me, like, where do I keep my books that I need to do overviews of, like publishers send me, or independent artists and writers send me from Kickstarter. It's not there. It was on the floor. It's not, I can I tell you. I them so you can see the Marvel Omnis. Okay, I guarantee you these are actually in an order, though. I actually stack them on the floor, what to read next, to do overviews of. And these come from different publishers, a lot of them, of course, from Marvel Comics. Uh, and some of these you'll be seeing in giveaways. Um, but, yeah, uh, and some of these are actually from my personal haul. So I don't know why Melanie put it all together. But anyway, uh -huh. come this way. Come this way. Let's let's look at uh, one of my favorite shelves. I love showing... Like, I started off with this shelf so many times. But this is the EC Library. I love it. To me, com comics... This is as good as comics could get. In You know, for comics in the 50s, they're just phenomenal. Harrow County up there. You have DMZ. Max Myth, uh, who donated actually a set of these for one of our giveaways. I think our 50K was kind enough to send that our way. Uh, this is the Crimson Collection. I don't I haven't talked about this. I got it for like, I want to say, it was a price glitch on Amazon, and it was cheap. The book was like $99, and the price glitch was for like 20-something, and they honored it, because I complain. But it's Brian Augustine, the same guy that wrote uh, co-wrote uh, Flash with Mark Wade, who's editor on Flash, and then Umberto Ramos. And then the Creepy and Eerie Archives, which I know some are out of print, and I need to get on that. So I believe there's a total of 26 or 27 of each of them. Uh, Dark Horse does these, and then Dynamite does the Vampirella archives. Uh, here we have TMNT, the IDW. I love these spines. Uh, they're just, if you... They're like the hilts of swords. This, to me, is my favorite, like, incarnation of the Ninja Turtles. I love this stuff. I've gone on about it. My daughter has read a couple of the volumes, and we're going to do an overview Lydia's at that age where, you know, you can only uh, make, not make, I don't want to say make your kid, but like, uh, try to get your kid to read the things that you're reading and enjoy them. But she genuinely enjoyed, like, um, Transformers. Like, that's her favorite. That's the Trapper Keeper version okay. of Jim and the Holograms. Okay. And I tried reading it. I didn't dig it. Oh, wait. I thought it had the Velcro. No. You did that every time. <laughs> this the Velcro. Uh, is Kelly Thompson and Sophie Campbell. And Sophie's artwork in TMNT is top-notch. Boom, Power Rangers. I've stated this on the show many times. I didn't grow up with Power Rangers, but I absolutely love these. Like, those first three right there are phenomenal. Irredeemable. Uh, they've printed a omnibus edition, and what Boom calls an omnibus is the softcover editions here of Irredeemable because they don't want to reprint the hardcovers of Volumes 1 and 5, I think, are the hard ones to find. What's this? What? On the end. Oh, this is from Simon. Yeah. This is okay, Mobius. That's where it is. Um, he wrote me a nice note. And here's my friend Simon, who found me an English copy of Marshall Blueberry. It's the comics that he grew up, he loved. And it's Mobius. It's one of the rare comics that, for some reason, has never. I think we only got like five stories translated here in America. But it's one of my most wanted. Like, even talking to interviewing Mark Wade, who now runs or helps run, I'm sorry. Boom Studios, we both talked about how, uh, or I'm sorry, Humanoids now, talked about how that needs to be translated. Here we have the Transformers IDW, and yes, fa uh, Volume 2 is missing right there because Lydia's reading it, and I'm not going to go yell at her to bring it back. Uh, but Phase 3, kicking it off, we're getting a Volume 2, I think Starscream's on the cover. No, Gutsu, the sword. And that this. is... Yeah. It is so much fun. That will always remind me of my time with my daughter. Like, we both bonded over My Little Pony when she was a kiddo. Like, a little kid, like three and four. Now we're bonding over Transformers. The Walking Dead collection, Wings, which I've talked about before. Um, Mind Management, Ghostbusters. Sadly, they're not, I, they even pulled the digital versions of Ghostbusters from their online store. 
So I don't see them reprinting these. That's the IDW stuff, and it's so good. Uh, Rust and Revolution. I need to get the last couple volumes of that. This is the IDW Revolution. A lot of the stories are not collected in the Transformers Phase 3. Voltron. This came from my buddy Kyle. I tried Ragnarok. I Ragnarok's get, awesome. I didn't get into it. You are dead to me. Okay. How dare you. Look, this came from Ray. This wonderful coin. This Peanuts coin. So cute. So awesome. Uh, down there we have some Udon books. Street Fighter. Oh, you know, while Japan. they're not the greatest stories, I don't care. Sometimes comics are just about having fun and the artwork. Right? Which is the main reason why I own these. Or, or Spawn, for that matter. I, yeah, I love Udon. Like, the artwork in this is just phenomenal. It looks like the stuff that, uh, you know, the video games that came out of Japan. Japan! I've done an overview of these on the channel before. Look at that cover. Look at them legs, man. Look at him, Melanie. I did. Uh, but this is... Um, the stuff that Udon has published in hardcover format. They still come out with more. And it's the same reason I own Spawn, really. I love the artwork in Spawn. The, the spite of how I felt about the story, even as a child, uh, reading these as the, they were coming out, the artwork is just freaking phenomenal. You have Todd McFarlane, and then later on you have Angel Medina, you have uh, Greg Capullo, Tony Daniel, uh, who else? The Dwayne Turner. But then here, yeah, here we have some Greg Capullo stuff. Tom McFarlane ink in it. It's just phenomenal. I love this stuff. And we have Grass Kings there from Boom Studios, the Hellspawn Complete Collection. Hopefully, Todd will, I'm sorry, Mr. McFarlane <laughs> uh, will re reprint these because I know a lot of people want these or the big deluxe limited editions. This is Grass Kings from Boom Studios and Nailbiter. Nailbiter, I think Wonder Matty liked it more than I did. I thought it was okay. I thought the art style was a little too uh, cartoony for the tone of the story about a serial killer and cannibalism. Look at that. That's gruesome. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Ultimate stuff down here. Why is the ultimate shelf down here? I was going to say, why do you have Marvel here? I don't it know. I think a long time it, ago, I suppose. And yeah, I just never, never moved it. But this is the ultimate stuff. You have Ultimate Fantastic Four, Ultimate Galactus, Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate X-Men. I don't think the last couple of issues of Ultimate X-Men were ever collected in oversized hardcover format. All that I do like the Ultimate Spider-Man alternating from red to blue, except for one yeah. point. Well, we're getting Omnis. We're getting a Volume 2 Omni, so, you know, we would need three of, or two more of those to get us to the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus with the, with the spoiler on the title, which I'm sure some people saw. All right, let's move up here. So... Up at the very top are some obscure size books that I love. Some you've probably seen on my uh, Hidden Gems or Favorite Image comics. And then we have some original Eastman and Laird Ninja Turtle books right there. That's the Ultimate Collections. Those are the ones that are in black and white. Uh, we have G.I. Joe IDW stuff. Sadly, line discontinued. And G.I. Joe, uh, the IDW. Or I'm sorry, this is the original Marvel years of G.I. Joe including the special missions. Uh, a lot of these are hard to find now, but these are just reprints of the G.I. Joe classics from Marvel Comics. Sonic and Mega Man. And then these small books right here that IDW considered... Well, I get here. Let me put this up here. But these is, this is what they consider an omnibus edition. Yeah. Like, that's a digest. It's like a small graphic novel. Yeah, digest size book. Just didn't cut it for me. Like, I need it big, baby. Like, I don't need these little books. But this is one of my rare gems I remember finding at a yard sale. Transformers, this is from IDW. This is the only way it's ever been collected, the animated movie. It's just the movie. But it's done, you know, in a comic book format. And this is made by TikTok Tina. And that is where my really oh, good oh. friend, TikTok Tina, made that. Isn't that cute? All right. Classics. The Marvel Years and the Discontinued UK line. Broke my heart when they discontinued. I had Volume 6 pre-ordered for three years on Amazon, and they finally pulled the plug. Sucks. Uh, this is the Dreamwave stuff. Despite of how I feel about Pat Lee, he did bring a lot of good uh, by introducing us to a lot of artists. Um, as far as him, 
paying those artists. Well, that's a different story. Uh, G.I. Joe versus the Transformers. This is the stuff that's uh, from Devil's Due. And this came from my buddy Kyle, man. Kyle was kind enough to send this my way. Stuff that hasn't been reprinted by IDW. Really good stuff. Uh, but they did do this. This is the Scioli uh, Transformers G.I. Joe, the quintessential collection. This is the one. Look, his foot's coming at you like Batwoman's foot's coming at you. Sure, if you want to say that. <laughs> Signed by Tom Scioli, who did like uh, Fantastic Four Grand Design. But he's got this Kirby-ish art to it, and even the colors are retro. I got this from IDW Cell, actually, and it came signed. They wow. found They found, like, a box of these. I remember doing our paper live stream. Paper looks old. Uh, yeah, but it's glossy paper. Oh. What I was going to say is I remember doing the live stream. It was a Black Friday sale, and I told people on the live stream about it, and they went to order it. They were like, Omar, you didn't say it was signed. And I, was, uh, they, I, I didn't know it was signed, but yeah. They found, like, a box of these signed, and it was on sale, like, ridiculously cheap. And it was already out of print. Uh, this I'll talk about when I do a manga tour, but what you need to focus on more is these amazing pictures here by Don Rosa. You have Scrooge McDuck and Goldie. And then this, of course, I like always show this. This is for from Tad Stones, the creator of Darkwing Duck. When Lydia wasn't even born yet, he drew this. And it comes signed yeah. with a Darkwing Duck. Our buddy Spider Ben. Stay dangerous, Lydia. He got that for us. So sweet of him. Tad Stones. I'm sure Don Rosa does not appreciate Darkwing hanging out with uh, Scrooge. Ah, oh, there are pictures from Japan. Yeah. Japan! I didn't know that was that. And here's our puppy Nikita who passed away. Yeah, that's my baby. My first baby. Uh, let's look at this shelf right here. I love this shelf. This shelf is like, how do I put it? Like a lot of my favorite stories, just randomly. That's the way my brain is. I, I, I love these Man, stories. Man, it's been years since I read Bride of Baghdad. Pride of Baghdad, not Bride of Baghdad. Oh, I Bride meant, Baghdad I meant, I meant to say Pride. It did not enunciate. Uh. Um, Kyle sent me this one here, a rare copy of the hardcover edition of the Dark Empire trilogy. For a split second, I was thinking four kids, the the Cartoon no. Network. Oh my gosh! <laughs> company. Uh, four kids walk into a bank. I think four I kids, to, one piece. I think that made it into my top ten favorite standalone stories. Um, then you have Castle Waning. Some of these you've seen in Hidden Gems. Some of them you see me talk about in my favorite Image comics, and then some of them. I haven't talked about yet. And then we have First Kingdom, a book that I need to focus on for people to see this wonderful artwork. This man took decades to make this story. Jack Katz. Oh my gosh, the art in here is phenomenal. Maybe I'll do that as a hidden gem, kind of like what I did with Flight. Uh, Morning Glories, discontinued oversized hardcovers, but talking to Nick Spencer, he said they'll come back one day. Uh, perhaps after he's done with the Substack thing. There's Queen and Country, solid. Stumptown, my wonderful wife got me those and I need to finish reading them. And the my shame pile right there. The Love and Rockets, the series I've tried twice to get into and I cannot make it past volume two, but I promise I'm going to try again. There's Habibi and Saints and Boxers. Up there we have some Six Gun, including my new copy of volume two because I dropped. Moving books can be a hassle, not just because you have to move them, but also because there's accidents. I dropped my volume two, it cracked, sucked. Anyway, the Hellboy Library Edition. I love this stuff, the Goon Library Edition. Even though Eric Powell is printing his own omnibus editions or they're soft covers, I prefer these. They're not complete though. He has more stories over there. Chew, Lock and Key, uh, the GD, BPRD. Uh, this, this stuff that I have tried and tried with my contacts at Dark Horse to try to make them reprint these because there's a whole era of people that have gotten into these collected editions in the last 10 years and some of these books have been out of print for oh my gosh ages i'm still trying i'm still trying and then moon shadow why is moon shadow here this is a hell boy uh, that's where cat stevens wanted it <laughs> okay do you have a moon shadow song yeah oh that's where i came from uh invincible I love this stuff. This is uh, one of my favorite Image Comics. This is the oversized hardcovers. Um, they did have like a now discontinued library edition, which were these big editions, but that's gone. I love these. This is uh, Robert Kirkman, the same guy that did The Walking Dead. 
100 bullets, keeping my volume 4 and 5 until I have volume 2 of the omnibus in my hand because I know how DC do. Ed Brubaker, Ed Brubaker, criminal, uh, scene of the crime, incognito, fatal. I didn't talk about uh, Sleeper, but that's over there in the Vertigo shelf. Uh, fade out. Oh, I love this Velvet. I have such a mad crush on the character of Velvet. She is so uh, pretty. She's so pretty. Is that safe for work? That was safe for work. That's not safe for work. Look how pretty she is. <laughs> yeah, pretty is the right word. She is a badass uh, assassin. But it, it's so good. Uh, Fatal. And I need to get with my contact at uh, Image to see if these are being reprinted or the Lazarus. But Lazarus is Greg Rucka, not Ed Brubaker. Kill or be killed. And then we move on to more Image hardcovers. They make beautiful hardcovers. We have Saga, Casanova. This is uh, Brian K. Vaughn. We stand on guard with artwork by Steve Scrooge. And the reason I'm pulling this out is because Steve Scrooge went from comics to go do uh, storyboards. And he did storyboards for the um, uh, the Matrix, including the Ma I think he did the Matrix Resurrection. And that's still fresh on the mind because I went to see that last night with some friends. But this is We Stand on Guard. Alternate reality. Glory, one of my favorite top ten image comics i stand by that with artwork by uh sophie campbell claws melanie super sexy santa claus hopefully we'll get some more manhattan projects then we have some revival here oblivion song trick-or-treat some books i read recently and down here we have some more hardcovers we have the discontinued peter Panzer falls we never got a volume two mice templar we never got anything past 3.2 i think still need to get those other two Paper Girls, that's over and done. Luther Strode. They reprinted the Luther Strode um, complete collection instead of the hardcover. I love this. This is brutal, bloody. Reminds me, I mean, obviously it is heavily inspired by anime. It's phenomenal. I love this stuff. One of the reasons I do this, by the way, is also for insurance purposes. You gotta have an archive of what you own when you have a collection this big. And I think this is a really good way of doing it visually. That way there's an archive. Knock on wood, something happens. Such a good book. You know, the sequel's still not out yet. Man, these books are hard. That, that is hard to find. Okos, people have told me they've been searching for that since I did my Hidden Gems. Lady Mechanica, which has now transferred the license over to Image. Need Here, to pick actually, that up. can you open this up? The My Favorite Thing is Monsters? Yeah, so we can see the art style that um it's like he's drawing it on notebook no, paper she, oh she i'm sorry it's um you know kind of autobiographical and yeah it's sketches gorgeous sketches on what seems to be notebook paper and it's very um text dense as well not compared to like what do you read monsters Woo! well that monsters is, isn't really but, like last god was text dense because it had prose in there it had poems in I there. I thought this did. Never mind. I suppose it's not as much as I thought. It's a deep read, though. I, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember... Because yeah. I, I want to do a review, but I need some time. Men of Wrath, I picked this up from Jason Aaron. So some of these books do have, like, signatures on them or sketches. I just had to show them for Omar. That means if I ever resell this or give it away, somebody named Omar has to win it. Omar Reyes. Omar Reyes, my buddy. <laughs> Shout out. Uh... You have the Complete Darkness here, Compendiums. Compendiums, these, these are like, I've had to replace my witch, what the heck? How did that happen? It's not my fault. How <laughs> I, I don't care about Witchblade. But see, this is the problem with Compendiums. Like, these older Compendiums are, I mean, this is 50 issues of Witchblade. And unlike uh, Spawn, they have the covers. So I don't know why Tom McFarlane decided to opt out the covers for the Spawn Compendiums. But these are older main compendiums. They fell apart. My volume two fell apart and I had to rebuy it. And it's not that I care about Witchblade that much, but I really like the artwork. Plas has got like early Francis Manipal art. Fallen Angel, a series completely underrated. I don't hear enough people talk about by Peter David. Um, hey, this was, I know why that's upside down because I did it in my hidden gems. This is Creed. I forgot I was in the middle of reading this. You bought that for me a couple of years ago. No wonder it looks familiar. <laughs> I was like, I like that cover. <laughs> I need to finish reading that. Uh, and down here we have the Rick Remender stuff. We have Black Science, Crawl Space, Deadly Class, Fear Agent, which hopefully will be reprinted in a couple of years by Image in this format. 
low Tokyo Ghost, Gigantic, End League, which is my buddy. Shout out to Project Viking. He loves this stuff. Death or Glory. And then, of course, Middle West. Remember, and remember. The fifth of Remender. That I was going to say, where do you see V for your data? What? No, that was a joke from yesterday. Oh. And then uh, From Hell and Monstrous. All right. Let's get to the Marvel and DC trades. Uh, but up there, we have Skydoll before we go through. So we have everything in alphabetical order here. Amazing Spider-Man all the way from the beginning. That's not in oversized hardcover format or in absolute format. Uh, all the way over here to Avengers, again, in alphabetical order. And Why did you do alphabetical chronological order across too. the bookcases? I don't know. Okay. Never thought about that. Um, so when I'll do an Avengers reading order, this is where I'll come and get some stuff. Uh, we have some epic collections. I do like to mix my epic collections in there with some uh, trade paperbacks. Cap right here. So look at how much love Cap has gotten in epic collection. Um, still a lot of Mark Grunewald stuff. Captain America, Daredevil, Defenders. I haven't seen a Defenders volume in a couple of years. Doctor Strange right there. Um, sometimes I put some, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> It's weird to see things like this in here, like that stand out. So I try to move these around to another location sometimes, and you'll see here in a little bit, like with this. I mean, what I did with Spider-Man, because I was like, you know, I kind of want to keep that era up there. Uh, there we have Eternals, Exiles, and then uh, Fantastic Four. And I've done a Fantastic Four reading order. That's where a lot of these books came from. A lot of these old Marvel premiere being replaced by complete collections or epic collections. Fear itself, but fear itself is going to be collected in an omnibus in the Thor by Matt Fraction omnibus, so I can get rid of that. Guardians of the Galaxy. This is the stuff that I wish they had collected in the as an omnibus, like a volume three omnibus. Or I'm sorry, Guardians of the Galaxy three thousand omnibus. Uh, the stuff that's past the Jim Valentino stuff. Guardians of the Galaxy by Al Ewing. That needs an oversized format. Um, Incredible Hulk here. Lots of Hulk. And I need to pick up, see, this is why I do this. And I don't know why this isn't in alphabetical order. Oh, because I was uh, rereading Volume 5, or reading Volume 5 for my upcoming uh, collected editions from Marvel. The, I need to pick up Volume 2. I need to get on that. Then we have Iron Man. Again, epic collections mixed in with some trades in, in there in between for stuff like, for example, like I have War Machine, right? So this collects Iron Man 278 to 289. And why I kept this is because this collects Iron Man 280 to 291. So I need a volume 18 to replace that uh, particular trade paperback. That's why I kept it. So Iron Man again. Civil War, even though they did this, it's still in reading order right there. Marvel Boy by Grant Morrison. I think that made it into my hidden gems. Not a lot of people have talked about that. We have some Moon Knight here, Epic Collections. Don't know when we're going to get the Mark Spector stuff in Epic format, but that would be cool. This right here from Luis that came from um, a nameplate for Melanie, Astonishing Melanie, and one for Uncanny Omar. This this one I thought I made it. I'm I official. love this. I hugged it. Yeah, what a guy, man. was not expecting that. That was so sweet. Silver Surfer in Epic format. Uh, you know, one of the ones I announced, like I pushed back, so I don't know what happened. But we need some more Surfer. We need some of these, like, Volumes 2, uh, 4 of Silver Surfer in epic format. Like, compared, like, to this one, like, look how thin Volume 1 is. That's, like, his early appearances. Volume 2 will be the big John Buscema and Stan Lee run. But Volume 1, man, that is skinny. And then we have Thor, God of Thunder. I know I've done an, I think I've done a reading order of Thor, but that's, the epics. The one that stands out is this one right here, War of the Pantheon. Like, see the color difference? Oh, it's almost yeah. like a mm -hmm. purplish. That's and, like on Ultimate Spider-Man. It's almost the same. Yeah, color. I don't know. And it's not like it's an it, it's a future <laughs> or a like wasn't the very there's first nothing, one. Anything, there's nothing different about it. Now I'm not a Marvel Masterworks collector, but I do keep some as what I call placeholders, and then eventually I give them away for our giveaways. So this is a placeholder until the. The epic collection will come out that will take its place. Um, here we have some more Fear Itself stuff. Oh, no, wait, that's Thunderbolts. Yes, I've done reading order of those, too. Here we have my favorite character, Wolverine. 
And he's behind you yeah. as you sit and make videos. People always make fun of me when they're like, you hate Daniel Way's Wolverine. Oh, that's what's And it's always it. behind Every... <laughs> you. And I was like, it's not my fault. I keep things in alphabetical order. I'm a fool. Um, would I buy an omnibus when this, if it comes out? Absolutely. And because I have his Deadpool on these. They're not that great. Excalibur Epic Collections until the omnibus comes out. Then we have X-Men. So you've seen my X-Men reading order. This is where all of it starts. On the shelves. I mean, like I said, this stuff's like breathing to me. So um, it I, it's not difficult for me to come to the shelf and reorganize things and check out, you know, hey, this needs to go here. This is out of place. I sense a disturbance in the force when things go out of place. There's new mutants. Hopefully we'll keep getting more and more of those epic collections and omnibus editions. Generation X. I know we have a volume two coming out. Then down here we have some X-Men Legacy, a very underrated series that I wish Mike Carey would get an omnibus format. Some other stuff like ugh, Gambit down there. Gambit probably could get an omnibus. Star Jammers, Firestar, which is going to be in the New Mutants Omnibus Volume 2. And then, of course, the Dawn of X, Reign of X era. Uh, down here we have some more Astonishing X-Men, some What If, and then some random Star Wars books. Interesting. Why did I keep those there? As well as the Savage Avengers. Up at the very top is Wednesday Comics. I'm gonna, I need to do a retro view of that to show you the big size of it. And alphabetical order is the DC stuff, kicking it off with the DC Universe, the history of the DC Universe, the origins from 52 after Infinite Crisis and after Crisis on Infinite Earths, all the Batman stuff. You've seen my Batman reading order spanning across these two shelves right there, leading us to Birds of Prey, stuff that I've done... I've done reading orders of this, and I really hope one day we'll get an omnibus. We have no Birds of Prey omnibus. I will take either Chuck Dixon or Gail Simone, but I prefer Gail Simone because that's big, big, big Gail Simone fan, and I love the Ed Bennis artwork. Good Booster Gold. Uh, I think some of y'all have seen my custom Booster Gold Omnis. And we've got Catwoman. We are finally going to get an Ed Baker omnibus with a... Uh, <sighs> Darwin Cook's artwork in here, Cameron Stewart, but also Paul Gulacci, um, whose artwork is a lot different than his Deadly Hands of Kung Fu when he was drawing that. Then we have more DC stuff, Countdown to Final Crisis, getting us the Flash right here. I Can like you... the Flash. I like, like the colors, the, the right? slides. They, they look the great. Looks, yeah. Like I have the Jeff Johns Omnis, but they look really good with the Jeff Johns Omnis. I wish that we would get this in omnibus format. Green Arrow, Volume 2 just came in the mail, so I'll be doing an overview of that, and I can give these away. Well, uh, this is the Green Arrow, John Winnick run, kicking off with Kevin Smith's run, and then Brad Meltzer did uh, something in there. And then, you know, I need what I need is the New 52 Green Arrow. I don't think I have Green Arrow and New 52. Why didn't I ever pick that up? I think I never really dug it, honestly. But if ever I need to do a reading order... Uh, the, the title that broke my heart, the Kyle Rayner, Volume 3 was cancelled, just like Aquaman, Volume 3, Circle of Fire, Identity Crisis, I guess I don't need that, I have the absolute, why do I still have, get that, I'm all out of there, <laughs> alright, um, more Justice League stuff, my buddy Kyle got these custom bound trades for me, so they took all the trades, put them together, because he knew, like, you know, I'm a stickler for continuity and orphaned issues, and the JLA has orphaned issues, as well as the Tower of Babel. It has some orphaned issues. It doesn't have, like, the Mark Miller issue in there. A couple of other issues are missing, but these trades never missed any of them. With the exception of, like, the Joe Kelly stuff, but uh, they added single issues in there. Here's some Justice League uh, post-Crisis on Infinite Earths when Brad Meltzer took over the book. Um, some JSA stuff in here. Stars and Stripes, Legion of Superheroes. A lot of Legion of Superhero stuff in here. Manhunter, I love this stuff. Mark and Draco, we need an omnibus. We need a final volume to wrap this up. Um, just some events, and of course, the best Nightwing run. Although Tom Taylor's run is pretty damn good, but Chuck Dixon's run, my gosh. Especially those Scott McDaniel early years. They were so good. Uh, more Nightwing here, including the new Tom uh, Taylor book. Power of Shazam. We never got a book two. We got a solicitation. Never came out. Robin Discontinued Series. Another great series by Chuck Dixon. Uh, Secret Six. This is something that I would love to see in omnibus format. Or Suicide Squad. Either one. 
either Secret Six by Gail Simone or Suicide Squad by John Ostrand or either one of those. Supergirl, sadly, by Peter David, Volume 5, never came. Come on, DC. Uh, I heard Superman Volume 4, Man of Steel, got delayed again until, I think, March. It was supposed to come out in October of 2021, and then in January, and I think last I saw was March. And Superman, if Superman Reading Order wins, this is where I'll be getting a lot of the books. And down here, more Superman... We have the Trinity, and then we get some Wonder Woman. You know, Wonder Woman, actually, when I did a reading order poll, Wonder Woman lost twice. Once to Thor, and I think the other time. I can't remember what it lost to. And then down here, we have New 52. So we have Batman New 52 down here. This is uh, Scott Snyder's run, because I have Volume 1 of the Omnibus. Then we have Justice League New 52. Um, I do have the Omnibus, and when that second Omnibus comes out, I'll probably end up giving those away. Aquaman right there. Detective Comics, but it's labeled as Batman Detective Comics. Um, Batwoman, this is the stuff that's not collected in the Omnibus format. This is the Marco and Draco stuff. And Flash, New 52. Green Lantern, New 52. Like I said, I don't have Green Arrow, New 52. Lots of Green Lantern, though. This is when, like, Green Lantern was, like, almost a flagship title for DC Comics. You have so much of that here. Like, just different titles. You have Green Lantern, New Guardians, Green Lantern Core, uh, Red Lanterns in there. Superman, this is New 52 era. Oh, this is New 52. I don't... Oh, that's because it came out during New 52. And then you have some... Oh, okay. Re I was going to ask. Rebirth. <laughs> uh, then you have the Rebirth era right here. A lot of it I have in oversized hardcover edition, but... Those are the ones that came out in trade. And then my daughter has these two custom-bound Mega Man books that came out because Archie stopped publishing those. And we decided that was a Christmas gift for her last year when she was big into Mega Man. And she uh, still is. Now, over here are some of the Marvel obscure big size editions like the monster size books or the gallery editions. My wife has God Loves Man Kills upstairs. Um, and then we have... This is what I meant by like... Some of the books that I'm currently reading or just, um, I don't know why I didn't put them in the main, main shelf. So currently reading pile over here in the middle in between those and other Marvel trades and Grim Fairy Tales. And Alf, Alf collection right here. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks James. And thank you. <laughs> big thank you too. to my camera woman. My goodness. I couldn't have done this without her. Now, if you're interested in purchasing some of these books, lots of these books, check out our other sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They are making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your minties. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that, as they say, is that. That was my Collected Editions Tour of 2021. This is hopefully the last time we do it at this house because plan on moving next year. Maybe I'll make a separate video for that. But thank you to all of you that donated so many books to not just our giveaways, but also my personal library. Uh, you know, building this over decades has been an amazing ride, and then to have you all along with it has been awesome. And sharing my love and joy of these things and making a channel and a living out of it has been crazy, but I love every minute of it. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to smash that like button. If you want to see a specific book for like a retro view or something, let me know in the comments down below. And hopefully, this will look a lot different when you see it in 2022. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Phenomenal ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, all of you stay healthy and safe. Much love. <laughs>